Hi everyone. Hello, hello. So a while ago, hmm, a long while ago, my friend Jana posted a video about her fountain pen journey, and it was in a format of this like eight pen questions that I didn't even know was a thing. So I'll link her video down below and her Instagram as well. Her videos are super high quality, so I really recommend at least checking out her channel in case something catches your interest. All right, these are the eight questions I'll be answering in today's video. And let's just get started. Number one, when and how did your fountain pen journey begin? Let's see. Well, I've actually always been into fountain pens in general. I had a cheap fountain pen during my school days and really enjoyed using it. Not sure exactly what happened after that, but my interest was reignited again years later after I saw pictures online of people's collections of Kaweco sports and sailor pens. They just looked so colorful and so fun, so interesting. I just wanted them all. I didn't know fountain pens could just be so fun yet still look professional. Soon after that, I got myself some affordable pens locally and some from AliExpress, all of which I don't have anymore except one. I talked more in depth about those in my fountain pen collection video from last year, so I'll link that below if you're interested in that. Question number two. What was your favorite ink at the beginning and what are your go-to inks now? Hmm, this is actually a difficult question for me since I've never really been that into inks and don't have many. So instead, I'll talk about my favorite ink and my most used ink. About a year ago, I came across this video by The Wet Pen and was so drawn to the inks mentioned in the video that I got them both. Volga River felt too blue for me, but then Pine Forest was the one that I fell in love with. It's a sheening ink that is similar to a greener Thalo Turquoise and has a magenta sheen. For those of you who don't already know, those are two of my favorite colors in watercolor. As for most used ink, this Bauka MS214 has always been my go-to. It's as waterproof as Platinum Carbon Black, yet costs only a fraction of the price. Although it's a pigment-based ink, I've left it in pens unused for weeks, sometimes even months, and have never had clogging issues at all. I have reviewed this in the past, but it's not easily accessible to most, so you'll see that it's not a popular choice online. Question number three. How have your pen and ink tastes changed over time? Well, let's see. For pens, in the beginning, it was all about aesthetics for me. I didn't really think too much or care about all the other features. But as time went on and I spent more time using the pens, my preferences slowly developed. Now, I can tell you that aesthetics of a pen is still my number one criteria. If I don't like how it looks, I won't buy it. Next would probably be nib size. I feel like there's a time and place for regular fine nibs, but if I'm using fountain pens, I enjoy seeing the ink flow out of the nib and also prefer broader nibs or even fude or bent nibs, where I can choose if I want it thinner lines or thicker, juicier lines. You know what I mean? As for closing mechanism, it's on the bottom of this list as I do prefer push-to-close types of caps like, you know, snap caps. However, ever since I got my Jinhao 82 pens, I realized that I don't mind screw caps all that much if the pen itself makes me happy. As for how my ink tastes have changed, disregarding my school days, I started with these two diamine inks, but I quickly realized that I prefer waterproof inks for both sketching and note-taking. And although I did say this sheening ink is my favorite, I no longer want any more sheening inks. And that's because to really see their duotone beauty, you really need the correct type of paper, which are rather expensive and not easily accessible for me. Moving on to question number four, what would you like to try in terms of pens and inks? Hmm, some more thinking again. I'd love to try a proper pilot pen, maybe platinum pen as well. Oh. Actually, you know what? Music nibs. 
Ever since I saw a music nib for the first time, I just fell in love. And I think the Thai alphabet would look so beautiful using the music nib. Actually, you know what? All the other special nibs from Sailor are also interesting to try. I can't remember what they're called right now, so I'll put a picture up on screen. And what else? Flex nibs, of course, those look fun. Maybe architect nibs? I don't even know how those work. I guess I want to try all the different nib types, but mostly the music nib. As for inks, I'd like to try some colors from RNK's sketch ink range for sketching instead of just black. Somehow I just feel like black is rather harsh and maybe too dark. I'm quite interested in Veroni, the magenta one, and for a non-black one, maybe Thea or Lily. I'm not even sure if I want to buy any more just because I feel like I don't use fountain pens often enough to justify more ink purchases at this time at least. What is your holy grail pen? I don't think I have a holy grail pen. I mean, of course, I have seen some super expensive pens that I love the look of, but I don't think I'd be comfortable using them nor spending that kind of money on pens. Like, even with this sailor pen that I bought felt too expensive and too precious for me to use, that I ended up selling it in the end. So even if I had the money, I wouldn't buy those, you know? Although I don't have a holy grail pen, I do keep a wish list that keeps changing all the time. I'm sure a lot of you know what I mean. <laughs> Question number six. How many pens and inks do you currently own? So I currently own eight pens and five bottles of inks. This one I got because it's like a Kaweco Sport, but the cap snaps on and off. It was basically my go-to pen a few years ago because it writes so smoothly. And then this Kaweco Perkeo in Peony Blossom with a fine nib. I bought this because it's a pink Kaweco with a snap-on cap. That's pretty much it. This one was from a couple years ago, the Kaweco Collection in Light Lavender, also with a fine nib. FYI, this does not mean I like Kaweco fine nibs. I wanted to try their broad nib, but sadly, it wasn't available here in Thailand. Oh, and I added flowers on there myself. If anyone wants me to make a separate video on that, please let me know in the comments. Next, here is Sailor's infamous Fude pen. I always get told that they didn't know this came in pink. Well, it's actually available in five colors all of which come with a 40 degree angled Fude nib, except for the green one, which is 55 degrees. The nib section is interchangeable with other Sailor Pen bodies as well. Check my video out if you want to see more on that. And then these two, I'm sure you can already tell, are not legit Lamy Safaris. They're both Lamy knockoffs. And this Senrio My Melody one I got rather recently, mainly because the color scheme. I actually haven't used it yet. And then this one I got about a year ago. I had contemplated getting the legit Lamy one that looks like this. So I got this one to see if I would be happy with the legit one if I were to buy it. And now that I've had this one for a while, I can't say that I don't have high feelings for it. Like, I mean, I like it, but I can also live without it. And for the last two, you may have seen this if you saw my live stream. They're the Jinhao 82 pens that are essentially Sailor dupes. I did see this floating around when it first came out and I kind of just dismissed it at the time. I don't know why. But then I saw Maggie's Instagram post and I just had to get myself a couple. Thank you again, Maggie. I'll never be able to afford the real Sailor pens that look anything like these because they're always limited editions. So I'm really happy I was able to get them. Both came with regular Jinhao fine nibs, but I changed it to a 1.1 stub nib and a Fude nib. Moving on to inks, again, the Bauka MS214. I came across this waterproof ink when I was searching for more affordable local options that were equivalent to platinum carbon black. Diamine lavender and cerise. I'm sure everyone knows Diamine already, but I don't think many people know that Cerise actually has a beautiful gold sheen. 
Check it out if you're the kind of person who likes this hot pink and gold combo. Okay, question number seven is a multi-part question. Do you have a limit on pens in your collection? Yes. Is it a number? Mm, no. Is it a feeling? Sort of, I guess, sure. When do you know if you have reached your maximum? I've said this on my channel before, but basically I have this drawer dedicated to fountain pens. So I told myself this is my limit for everything fountain pens, including inks. Finally, what would you do if another pen or ink came along? Easy answer. I must resist. <laughs> I'm just joking. Well, not really. If that happened and I really wanted the pen or ink, I'd either have to say no or sell some stuff or give some stuff away to make room for the new ones. <laughs> and there we have it. That's all eight questions. Do you have any of these pens in your collections too? And let me know down below if you have any other fountain pen questions that wasn't answered in this video. That's all I have for you today. As always, thank you so much for watching everyone. Don't forget to drink lots of water and stay hydrated.